What's up, Copy Squad? I was recently going over an email that my writers Cody and Ben wrote together for a client. This was the last email out of four that we reviewed together that day. So anyway, while picking apart this single 167 word email, I basically put on like a full email copywriting workshop uh, full of advanced email copy tactics. And I thought this is the kind of stuff that my YouTube audience could really benefit from because it takes us beyond just the simple disrupt intrigue click formula that we're typically espousing on this channel. So make sure that you stay until the very end of the video where I'll show you the original email that they came to the call with, and then I'll show you a copy of the final newly edited email so you can kind of compare the two. If you're an offer owner or publisher, pay attention to this because this is me workshopping just 167 word email out of four that we did that day. And we spent about 30 minutes working on it to make it as sharp as possible for our client. I take immense pride in our craft. And if you want to work with my agency, we will treat each email for you the same level of care that we did for this one. Just visit copysquad.net forward slash work with us. Fill out the form if you'd like to discuss working together. Thanks so much and enjoy. Peace out, Copy Squad. Uh, your trash could soon make investors rich. All right. Yep. So I don't like the trash angle inside this promo because I don't think the reader actually cares. I think it's an interesting little use case. But again, I just don't see how the reader could care. The second thing, your trash could make investors rich. Yeah. Do not care about that either. So there's two two misses at play right there. All right. So next. Um, an urgent... 11 trillion is up for grabs right now. <laughs> this material will unlock 11 trillion dollar fortune. So on the whole, most of these subject lines kind of suck. And the 11 trillion, there's another problem where it's like monopoly money. Mm -hmm. It's it's Grand Theft Auto coins. It's like, what's 11 trillion dollars? I saw I saw this very clear once say two three years it's 2019 it's been four years was it 2019 i think it was but well, maybe it was but dean graziosi and tony robbins were doing their launch their first mastermind launch and the beginning of every single one of their youtube ads started with there's a, you know that's there's a something billion dollar industry that you can tap into. It was either one, two, 51, or 52. Billion dollar industry. They're talking about the info publishing space. Just creating course creating, course content, right? I don't remember that number. And not only do I not remember that number, whether it was one or 50 made no difference in my memory bank. That's the same thing. What is 11 trillion? You know? That I'm not getting fifty billion dollars off of their course creating thing, you know. Like what they're trying to do, and what you guys are sort of attempting here is FOMO. But again, it's too pie in the sky for me to feel the urgency that you're trying to make me feel. So all of these are right. Well, that was like that promo that I posted in the inner circle too, where it's like it's two point one quadrillion dollars. Yeah, the most disruptive material in history is about to open up massive investment opportunities in every industry on Earth. Soon it could replace silicon trips as a as a copy chief. If you understand what I'm going to be looking for, it can help you sort of self edit. But I, I'm going to read the subject line, and then I'm going to read the disrupt, and the disrupt has like two grades the disrupt itself and then which we just discussed how well do you thread your disrupt to your larger argument of teasing your entry that you're going to be introducing in the next lines right you guys follow so far mm. let's sort of stop right here on line three which is about as far as you usually need to go and you tell me what you guys think I think I've identified a bad habit of me doing this where it's like, I feel like I've paid it off because I pay it off at the end, but that's not okay for the reader. I've noticed that in my promos too, in like a section where like I'll make a claim or something and I will, I like have the info or whatever to pay it off, 
but I, it, it comes at the end. And so it's not really paid off. So like in this, like we're talking about trash can make investors rich, but it's like the second last line that we say that. Hmm. Okay. So what you're saying is you're disrupt and even your intrigue section, but trade the subject line. Yeah. Because right. I feel, I always feel like, well, I'm tying it at the end. So that's fine. And it's not. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You're like, you're like, Hey, I got something you want. Now listen, to all this bullshit. Yeah. While and I I'm like, ah, yeah, here's the thing at the end, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay. I've noticed that in a lot of my writing. All right. Well, cool. I mean, I think it's even better that you discover it for yourself and you sort of have, you know, it's your idea, not mine. I'm not telling you, <laughs> you sort of see it. That's how all persuasion works, right? So, okay. Ben, what are your thoughts on these first three lines? So the disrupt, I would say, is fine. Like with the investment opportunities in every single industry. Maybe, uh, possibly vague, I don't know. But then it goes, it starts talking about the, the industries rather than rather than the opportunities themselves, which I think could lose interest. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, looking at this, something I want to point out, I think, I think Ben, uh, you make two really good points at a technical level of like how well this is written. The, the first thing that you said is the first line is vague. I sort of look at this, the most disruptive material in history. Okay. So again, the most disruptive material in history, those are your opening lines. It does have like a, it sounds, you're saying it's big, but the problem is there is nothing in my lexicon or experience as an investor that I'm looking for the next disruptive material. I don't go like, all right, another disruptive material. However, there were periods in history where you say the most disruptive crypto, you say the most disruptive energy stock, you could say the most disruptive tech stock, you could say the most disruptive, uh, I mean, pick a hot topic, IPO, uh, the most disruptive, you know, the thing is, you have here, the most disruptive, easy bake oven. That's what you've kind of done. The most disruptive mm -hmm. Play-Doh machine. You know, like, it couldn't have changed the game at Play-Doh. No, <laughs> you'll, never, you'll never look at Play-Doh the same, right? <laughs> that's kind of what you're doing here, all right? Like, that's cool if I gave a shit about Play-Doh, right? All right, that's problem number one. I'm about to open up massive investment opportunities in nearly every industry on Earth. Okay, again, so one of the tough parts here, that's, that's compelling. The problem is something that Ben was saying is the execution in the next line is not great because you're writing like promo copy again. You're writing as if you have all day, right? Like, look at this. Let me see what this comes out to. I think it's going to be a surprising number. 167. That's actually shorter than I thought it was going to be because some of these bullets are like really long. <laughs> So anyway, it's a bit on the long side because we want to aim. It's generally under 150, right? You know, it, depending, so but like that's a, it's a decent benchmark. I think mm -hmm. around 150 to 180 is a solid range, which we hit here, which is fine. It's good. So anyway, we're looking at this. So I think the execution here, when it comes to these bullets, written to, it's not dramatic enough. It's not intriguing enough. It's like I want, uh, I want it to be written more in an intriguing fashion. That's more emotional and more related to the reader. So we could probably workshop this a little bit now. The most disruptive material in history is about to open up massive investment opportunities. Okay, another thing, reading this out loud, boy, what a mouthful, right? There's a lot going on here. The most disruptive material in history is about to open up. All right, so there's a couple things. You have this sort of connecting clause, is about to. And then you have this open up, is basically one action verb, right? Massive investment opportunities in nearly every industry on earth. Okay. So let's 
just do better writing on this one. So the most disrupted material. Okay, again, we know that that's not exciting. What else could we say about this besides that it's a disruptive material? What else could I call it? The most expensive material. All right. It's, I, it's the, we could argue it's the rarest material because it's yeah. so hard to produce. I yeah, like some, that. Something about being new and unique. Okay. I think one of the things that we have to work on is the word material itself, right? Mm -hmm. No one gives a shit about a material. It means nothing to an investor's brain. Can we the say work. substance? Oh, that wouldn't either. No. Remember, think about investors. What would get mm -hmm. it? Like I said, the number one tech stock, the number one crypto, the number one IPO, the number one SPAC. Those are all like promos that have existed. What is this the number one? Lots of things. What sort of category can we place it in? What sort of category could we put it in that's hot for investors that they would be excited about? Um, tech breakthrough. All right. Resources? Resources. Resources is resources sort of high risk, high reward. Like mm -hmm. resource people will be hot. For resource talk, if yeah. you're on Marin Katusa's list, I mean, and you put, yeah, you put the number one resource. I'm opening it, but if I'm on Eagle, and there's no resource guru, and I'm on the list, I, you're not talking to me. Well, this is a tech list, so we, I feel like then we should lean into that. Right. So one thing that we could do, see this? Actually, let's get it for the camera. The rarest tech material on earth. If I'm a tech person, immediately got me. Yeah. I don't care what comes next. Yeah. Because I don't even know that there was a rarest tech material on Earth. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. The next thing. About to. I, you know, that's it, the about to thing is a function of the next part, actually, what makes it so wordy. So I actually think I'm okay leaving that up. But it's open up massive investment opportunities how can we make this more this is where it really gets blocky gets clunky so what how can we do that the rarest tech material with, on earth is about to do what you can go with the send ripples through every industry on earth or impact every industry on earth I feel like that's getting away from the reader though because like the point of this is you know the massive investment opportunities is geared yeah to if we're just disrupting industries that's not nearly as attractive to yeah, the reader. true true so exactly, Cody, that's what I was going to say. So go ahead down that thread. What what else could we do in that regard? You could go with the unleash, flo uh, unleash a flood of wealth or something along that line. Okay. I feel like, I feel like yeah, we can go with something like that and we, we can split this. So it's like the rarest type material on earth is about to unleash like a, a $11 trillion flood of wealth. And the next line is, you know, nearly every street, every industry on the planet is going to be affected or is going to be turned on its head or something like that. Mm. Okay. I like the idea of that concrete number. So the 11 trillion uh, now works as a form of credibility because it's concrete. And it's not about how big it is. I'm not trying to entice you with the 11 trillion because you're so enticed by, you're enticed by rarest tech material. 11 trillion now is just like fact, like, concrete fact so let's take that 11 trillion and make it exciting for the reader that's the biggest problem with the 11 trillion dollars how do i make that exciting for grandpa clark it's the only way is like we have to make it so that they can have access to it right the 11 trillion is not interesting unless they can access it mm -hmm. exactly how do we do that there's so much on earth I don't know how to word it, but it's basically like the rarest tech material on earth is about to open up an $11 trillion or unleash $11 trillion. And everyday investors can, could get on it if they know this one company. Yeah. So I'll give you guys a hint. You can just tell them that they will receive it. So you could say, 
is about to send like eleven trillion dollars into the pockets of early investors. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Right. Boston so investors. there you go. All right. It's about to. All right. So something else. We'll put that down, but then we're going to workshop that even further. So notice how we're no longer talking about every industry on earth. Talk about investors. Talk about you, the reader. And I don't want to. Here, I'll give you one. So. First thing I want to change is first investor. I don't want people to think they miss this. Mm-hmm. To I would say something like this. Investors who move today. Oh, yeah. I like move today even better. Right? It's the rarest tech material on earth. It's about to send 11 trillion straight to the pockets of investors. We move today. Okay. So let's workshop this. The rarest tech material on earth is about to disperse. I don't like that word. Tributes even worse. The rarest tech material on earth is about to offer $11 trillion to the investors when we're today. All right. So we got something enticing, got something solid, got urgency. One sentence is already better. To the difference. You see why it's better too, but we talked about it. We talked about all the reasons it wasn't good. We talked about ta- uh, most disruptive material. No one cares about material. Massive investment opportunity. Eh. Every industry on earth isn't about me. All, all, all those problems are now fixed with this new line. Now, tell me how you would imagine we keep the same format. What should go here instead of soon it could? We could go like um, this, oh, th- this explosive material is, or, or sorry, in, um, within days, this material is going to revolutionize. And then it could be like each industry because you can make it a lot shorter that way and just say the industry and how much money that they could or how much money the, the material is going to produce for that for that industry. What is it's, the problem with that? Though? What is missing from that? Me. I mean, it, so in instead, each- instead of saying it's going to revolutionize all these industries, you could say something like it's going to open up an opportunity for investors to pull 1.1 trillion out of this market. 104 billion out of this market, four and a half trillion out of this market. Okay. Yeah. That's closer. That's better. That's, better. That's intermediate. What's the advanced line? <laughs> <laughs> you got you want to take a swing? Thinking about Ben, you take another swing. I like the I like the within days thing or like or any moment now, like leading with that. Well, you can see yeah, you can lead and go in the next few days. Yeah, yeah, the next few days, something like that. All right. If you want to tie it to the reader, that's my hint. I thought I kind of did, no? Yeah. All right. You, if you want to really tie it to the reader, could you, instead could of, you use do we you? want to go with like the angle of like it's going to affect your life in like all these ways? Is that what you I'll say at? this. All of your suggestions all start with the wrong frame. They all start with the wrong subject. You want to start so, with investors. You want to start with the me? Start with you. Investors will soon have a chance to pull mm-hmm. 11 trillion out of this market, one and a half trillion right. out of this market. So we could yeah, say. That's nice. That's nice. Right. So you keep saying it's going to do this for investors. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. could instead just get straight to the result mm-hmm. and say investors I could do that a will lot to tap be- into. And so I'm going to workshop this now. See how I'm doing this? It almost also kind of creates like a bit of curiosity and like dissonance because I got to read like water filters, a $3.2 billion market. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> also known as water, you know? Intrigue. No, intrigue. Yeah, like sci fi, a $4 right. trillion dollar market. I'm like, what are you? I, no, it's not, you know? So that's so, cool. Right. So one of the cool things about this, and this would be a great way to sign off. Yeah, we got like three lines. Is that when we fix the problem of who we're speaking to, a lot of this other stuff falls into place. Yeah. Like when we have the fundamentals, it doesn't matter what words. Like, like ah, as soon as today. No, I still don't care. If you just switch this to what I get and not make it about what the industry is going to do. But I get to tap into all of these, all of these. And you say every electronic device on the planet, that doesn't make sense. Like, how? And then you do it again. Every battery. How? Sci-fi level. And then you get to a point where it's like, wait, how are these things connected? Like when the foolproof water filters pop up. 
I'm like, what does that have to do with batteries? You see, yeah. now I'm creating this web of intrigue. I'm just layering and layering. And then you weightless layering. car parts. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? Yep, <laughs> exactly. So all in into the marvel of science. <laughs> okay. One small Ontario-based plant is, uh, for some reason, like the word plant made me think like, you know, Bulbasaur, like plants, like like the rose bush in Ontario is gonna yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the, I was the just problem. thinking on that the note of entry because like I, I I made I put Ontario based because I was like I want it to be credible and like succinct but sh- do we want to should we take that out and be like one secret facility like in northern Canada you know like this no but like getting rid of Ontario oh. Um, I mean, yeah, that's not important. The reason Ontario is important is the same reason 11 trillion is important here is it needs some sort of concrete credibility. Uh, right, and but that's you why I did it. You I don't really curious. need it. You don't really need it here. I mean, it's fine. One Ontario-based facility is creating this miracle tech miracle tech material in secret. Right now. I, I don't know what to say here, but like... That's a weird edit to me. Why are we... Oh, okay, never mind. Working on this miracle... I mean, honestly, like we can only undo a lot of the entry that we've built. I I don't actually want to even bring in Ontario. Like this is so intriguing unto itself. Just leave it, yeah. Boom. There we go. We did it. All right. So that's the that's that's dead fork. And we did a good job. And we learned a bunch of lessons here. It was a solid call. Got a lot of principles and foundations built in. And I have to jet. All right. And until then, peace out, copy squad. Hey, Copy Squad, I hope you enjoyed that peek inside of how we operate as a copywriting agency. And if you want to learn how to write these kinds of emails for yourself, along with all sorts of other copywriting skills, I suggest, highly recommend you check out Copy Squad Lite. The name is kind of ironic now because every month we put in new content, new masterclasses, new trainings that it's no longer a light program in my opinion anymore. We've got hundreds of hours of content. We've got like several emails email trainings, we've got advertorial headlines and big ideas, we've got all sorts of stuff on how to break into copy, how to find and win clients, how to do prospecting and research. There is just so much content packed into this program. Plus you get all my sales letter breakdowns in PDF form for the last four years. We're talking hundreds, thousands of pages of copy that you can go through with all my notes added. Not only that, you're also going to get access to my book, Take Their Money, as part of your membership. And also a full Discord community with hundreds of like-minded copywriters, including freelancers, some guys who are publishers, some guys with tons of experience, and some newbies alike. So there's just so much value stacked. I, I might have to change the name from Copy Squad Lite. But if you're interested in that, you can go to copysquad.net forward slash light, L-I-T-E, and check out Copy Squad Lite today. I hope you enjoyed the video and got a lot of value out of it. And I thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, peace out, Copy Squad.